Hey guys, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talking about the get method in PHP. In PHP, the get variable is used to collect the value of uh, or value from the HTML forms using the get method. The information which is sent from the HTML forms with the get method is displayed in the browser address bars as well. Here you can see that how we use this get method in the HTML first. Here I just create a form, you know about the form. Then here I'm just write the action. Let's suppose the actions here is uh, like uh, I just write that register.php right here. Okay. And here I just used the method get. Okay. Here you can see that. Here I just create one another file with the name of register.php okay now here you will see that firstly I have to provide full name the full name which is equal to here I just write that this will be the user input which is a type of text right here okay then here I will provide the name which is equal to name then here I will provide the email as well so email here is let's suppose i will provide the input input type here is text and then here we will provide the name which is equal to email right here okay now here i will provide the input which is a type of submit button so these all are the HTML tags what I am just using right here. Here you will see when I just go to this uh, register.php page. So here I will write firstly I will write that welcome to then here I just provide PHP which is echo and then here I will use the variable get here. So that will get firstly the name right here so the name here is what i am just adding the name right here into this method you can see here this is the name of that tag right here what i am just including here okay this is the first php what uh, the tag what i am just writing here then i just use not sign and here is write your email is your email is here i just write that php and the php here is echo that will also use the get method right here and here inside this get method i just use the email right here okay and then here i just close this code right here so what is the email here so email here is from this get method okay hope so you understand now now here my code for the get method is completed here okay now here i just go to the browser and run this so we have an error in line number nine which is you may say that this is i just write not and then your email is so yes in line number nine we have an error but as you can see there is no error just because of i am running the backhand file right here you can see and here I just go to the this method right here which is php get method and I just write this into the browser so you can see here first name is I just write hello and then here I just write hello at the rate gmail.com okay as you can see when I just submit this so you will find that here this is welcome to okay here you will find that welcome to our name here which is hello then here you can see that this is simply a not sign and then here you can see that your email is and here it will print me that your email is and then that will get the method of email as well now just see to the code here you can see that firstly that will get hello to with the help of this get method that will get our name from or our first name full name from this file and then after that 
here that will get this not sign and then after that your email is and with the help of this get.email method that will get our email from this forms as well. This is how we use get method into our PHP code. So the variable names are the value will be visible in the URL of the HTML forms submitted by the get method. The get method is restricted to send up to 2048 characters like 2048 characters only. When you submit the sensitive information like password, then you should use this method. The get method cannot be used to send the binary data like images and words or documents. Okay. Get method can be accessed using php query underscore string environment okay so this is also a variable so php get method associative array is used to access all the send informations by the get method as well this is how i just tell you about that that when to use the get method hope so you understand now one another thing is get method the data is sent by or sent as the URL parameters that are usually the strings of the names and the values pair separated by the AND operators. Okay. Hope so you understand now that how we use, when to use and what is the use of the get method right here. You can also write this kind of uh, thing or this kind of method like here. I just use two separated files right here. But you can also use these in the one uh, file as well this is up to you how you use it simply you have to write simply this php php right here and then you have to use if statement and then get the name as well so i was not moved to that because this is very simple and understandable to you that in the real life example you have to use your php and html code like this so that's why this is a good practice for you hope so you understand now if you find any other problem regarding to this lecture, please let me know and thanks for watching this lecture. Hey guys, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are talking about the post method in PHP programming language. We see how to use it and when to use it. The post method does not have any restrictions on the data side to be sent, just like a get method. The post method can be used to send ASCII as well as binary data as well. But when you see the get method, so in the get method you have sent only the 2048 characters only. Okay, here you can see that the data can be sent by the post method does through the http headers only so security depends on http protocols by using the secure http you can use or you can make sure that your information is secure php post associative array is used to access all the send informations by the post method variables are not visible in url so users can bookmark your page as well the get method or sorry the get method is a global variable okay in last lecture we used the get method but data can send in the post method is not visible in the url just like a get method preferable for sending the sensitive data you have to use post method and there is no limitations of the sended data by the post method as well let's just see how we use it let here i just use get so in the place of get you have to use the post okay post is also a method just like get and here you can see that i just create a new file which is registers.php okay here i will get this from here and here i will paste it and this is registers.php okay here I am just simply change this with post method okay and then here I am changing that as well okay you can see here my code is completed right here 
Now here I just search it into the browser and you will find that. Here let's suppose hi, hi at the gmail.com. So here you can see that. That will send all the requests here. There is no address of that as well. Okay. And firstly here, okay, yes. Or I just go back and here in the post method and here is right registers.php okay and this is the post method right here refresh hi hi at the red gmail.com and now you can see that the email is email link or sorry the url link is same right here okay and here you can see that hello welcome to hi and your email is hi at the red gmail.com this is Hey guys, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talking about the contact form in PHP. That how we are creating the contact form with the help of PHP right here. For that purpose, I am just taking the get and the post method what we studied in our last lectures. Okay, here you can see that same as a case like our post method. Here I am just creating the action, and action will get this contact backup file so here you can see that i just get this contact backup file right here and after that i am just using the method which is the post method okay hope so you understand now after that here you can see that i am just creating the contact form so firstly we have create the label label here is just a text which is not changeable label here i just use for which is the input name okay and here I just close this here I just write name firstly I will write the name here okay or here I just write this is full name okay then you have seen that here I just use SUP and then this is tyric this is subscription uh, subscription test text which is means that this static is means that that this is the mandatory field right here you cannot leave blank this field now here i just take the user input user input here is the type which is text and then here i just write name which is name and here i just provide the id so id of this here is i will provide that this is the input name you can see here our this label for the name is completed right here i just copy this paste it again for the email as well and this is the full name okay so the email is also a subscription test right here a text right here and this is the input type email right here okay and this is the input type email here then here I just copy and paste this email tag right here and then close this tag here and this is also an email. So there are two fields what I am just creating here then after that I will create subject of that and subject here is you may say that this is the input type subject and this is also input type subject and this is email instead of email here i just use subject here okay so here three text fields are completed now i just create some of the text boxes as well how we can create it let's just see this is the input type message and here this is the message here okay here you can see that this is uh, what I am just creating for the input type I am just creating here which is the text area text area is when you are just uh, creating the large amount of text or when you are just creating this kind of text box so at that case you are using the text area the text area name here is message and then here the id which is equal to i just write that this is input 
message right here. Then I just set the rows to it. Rows which is equal to let's suppose five, uh, sorry six, and then here columns which is equal to let's suppose the columns here are thirty five. And I just close this code right here. And after this, close this code right here. Okay. Now our code for the message is also completed right here. Now here I will take the user input, which is a type of submit. This is a type of submit right here. And then here after that, I will provide the value. Value here is submit. And I just close this code right here. Now here I will provide the input which is a type of reset button. I will tell you about this reset button in next, uh, when we are just uh, running this code. So here I just write, this is the reset right here. And I just close this code right here. So you can see here, our forms is completed right here. And when I just go to the browser, check this form. So that form is showing me the output like this, okay? Here you can see that I have write that the paragraph P right here and when I just run this code so that will setting his locations right here and same is the case like that for instead of paragraph P you have to write a single line break as well okay here you can see the form is now look like that still here when I just add some of the emails and messages as well with the help of this reset button when i just click on reset so all fields are cleared here this is the use of reset remember that now here i will go to the um, contact backup file or contact backup page and here i just create some of the backup information back end informations okay where i just set the post methods as well here you can see that firstly i have to write that this is the h1 tag and here is right thank you for submitting contact form here that will be the output after running or after submitting the form here i just write paragraph tag and here i just write your information is listed and i will list all of the informations to the user so this is the order list right here ol tag for the order list and then here i just write li tag and inside this li tag here i will use and inside this li tag i will use firstly i am just write em tag for the imprecise the text firstly i will imprecise the full name right here then after that full name i will write the php code so here i will write php where i just write echo and echo here is i will use post method and the post method here is firstly i will get the name of the id so this is the id name right here which is in the contact form so you can see here this is the name right here hope so you understand now that these are some of the names what i am just creating right here okay and then after that i will close this code right here with php hope so you understand now now i just copy this all code and here paste paste and paste for the four entries right here okay here you can see that then i will write email then get the email as well then here i will get the message and this is for the message here then here sorry this is for the subject firstly i will write this for the subject then what is the name of the subject as which is subject right here and then here we will write the input type message here so this, this is the input type message so i will write this is for the message right here so our contact us form is completed right here that will get the post methods as well refresh this hi hi at the gmail.com hi i am submitting contact form okay so this is contact form hello this is message box 
okay when you are just resetting this so all fields are clear when you are just submit so here you will find the error in line number 12 which is the error right here so which is email and then php and this is the email as well okay now i just run this code so you can see here now thanks for submitting the contact form which is the h1 heading right here then here the paragraph that your information is listed so this is paragraph tag right here after this you can see here firstly we have the post name email subject and message and we will get all of these things from our forms so firstly we have full name then email then subject and then message box right here so all of the detail is listed here with the help of this form and this is just for li tag so here i just use ol tag for overall which is the order list and then el tag and these are are the imprecise tags which is for em tag so em tag which is using for the imprecising the text right here hope so you understand now that how we create the contact us form with the help of post method if you find any of the problem regarding this lecture please let me know and thanks for watching this lecture hey guys welcome to this lecture in this lecture we are going to talking about the global and the local variables in the php programming language as we discussed earlier as the variable is a name which is given to a memory location and it must be declared before it is used in php all variables are declared at the starting of the program as you can see or in php variables can be declared at any points of the any time before they are used in the instructions variables are classified into the local and the global variable which is the main topic of our this lecture here the main difference between the local and the global variables are that local variable is declared inside the function instead of local function or sorry local variable the global variable is declared outside the functions in the programming body here you will see the example of the local and the global variable here you can see that i just create php and i just close this php tag right here here i just create a function just leave that the function what is the function right here we will discuss function in a uh, uh, function is a separate topic and this is uh, i will create a separate lecture on that so just forget about the function just uh, keep eyes on the variable only here you can see that i just create a function which is abc and here i just write this is let's suppose we have the function which is timestamp okay now here i will write that let's suppose this is the variable right here and variable here is i just write that this is temporary variable or here is right this is a temp variable okay now which is equal to here is right date okay now i just get the date function right here so this is just a program here okay for the local and the global variable here i just write one f then js here then year right here okay here after that i have to concatenate this function here which is sorry uh, this parameter here which is the timestamp so here don't worry about this parameters and the function so this is the function name so this is a function as a keyword this is a function name this is a parameter okay we will discuss about these in next upcoming lectures and we are just starting the sections on the function here i will return the value of the date is and here i just write that this is our variable name here which is temp okay and close this code with the semicolon here you can see that i just declare a local variable which is temp okay hope so you understand now that this is our local variable 
so a variable what you declare inside your functions body like this this is called a local variable local variables are the variables that are created within and can only be accessed by the functions they are generally a temporary variables that are used to store the partially proceed result period to the function's return. One set of local variables is the list of arguments to a function in our, let's suppose, uh, what we studied about the variable section. Okay. Here, you can see that after this, here I will go to the global variable right here and i will tell you that what are the global variables in the php programming language here i just write this php tag right here and there here i just write php and then close this php tag right here okay here you can see that after this i just create a function let's suppose a function here is name and the name which is equal to here i just write name here is xyz any name you can you have write any name right here okay so here i just simply define a variable here now same as a case like our old function what i just already declared here so this is the function and function is let's suppose xyz okay here you can see that now after that here i just write global as a keyword okay and after this global here i will access the name variable right here okay so this global keyword will makes a variable global as we use inside a function right here so you can access this variable anywhere inside the function and outside the function's body hope so you understand now now here i will return the name right here okay hope so you understand now now here you can see okay hope so you understand now that how our this code is working right here which is a global variable and the local variable and you know the use of that as well hope so you understand now if you find any of the problem regarding this lecture please let me know and thanks for watching this lecture